Cybertruck delivery event uh, failing to boost Tesla stock as pricing for the EV came in higher than initially promised. This has questions to loom, of course, for investors, not only over Cybertruck production, but also on the EV giant CEO, Elon Musk. Here to discuss all that is Ross Gerber, CEO and president of Gerber Kawasaki Wealth and Man Investment Management, as well as, of course, an investor in Tesla. Ron, it's great to see you. Um, listen, you are a shareholder. You were listening to the event, I would imagine, yesterday. Give us your takeaway. What'd you make of it? Well, I, I mean, the event was a pretty typical Tesla event with lots of lights and, you know, excitement. And, you know, it's a very exciting time for Tesla releasing such an advanced, incredible vehicle. I don't think the pricing is relevant because I think they can't make a lot of these vehicles in the short term and people will pay $100,000 for it, including me. So I think just the coolness factor, the tech you know they can easily sell out the cars they have for the next two years but that doesn't actually have a huge material impact on tesla's earnings or or you know overall financial position um which i think you know it will take years obviously for this to have a positive impact but we do expect pricing to come down as they scale and that's been the case with every vehicle they've made okay so i just want to linger on something you said you are going to buy one of these things because i thought you were sort of on yeah. the fence about this no not the cybertruck what I said earlier this week is I'm getting rid of my, my wife's Model Y for a Rivian and I'm going to get rid of my Plaid for a Cybertruck. You know, the the Plaid I only bought because I was wait, waiting for the Roadster and I, I like the Plaid, but it's the, it's just like a lot of the issue I have with Tesla right now is the models haven't been refreshed for a long time. So I'm excited for the Model 3 Highland to get to the United States, but the Model Y and the Model S and X really need some upgrades as well. And I think that's what Cybertruck is foreshadowing is the new technology that will be in the upgrades for the next cycle of Tesla's over the next five years. And Ross, um, I just want to follow up on that. What, what excites you about the truck though? What capabilities have you enthusiastic about it? I have to ask you, are you going for, for base here, Ross, or the Cyber Beast? Which one are you no, going I'm for? No, I'm going for the Cyber Beast 100%, but <laughs> you know, I, you know, I've never been shot at before, you know, in my car. So those features are less appealing to me. But, uh, you know, um, I think for me, I like driving the most advanced, fastest, coolest vehicle I can get my hands on. You know, I just love cars. I love technology. And, and Tesla was always attractive to me because it was the merger of cars and technology, you know, so for me to get my hands on such a fast, large vehicle with such amazing technology, you know, like that's really exciting to me. Uh, I, I'm not a typical consumer though. And and so I think for the typical consumer or the typical truck buyer, obviously this is outside their budget. And I think that's what analysts are talking about, but I don't think this vehicle was made for them at this point. And it is an enthusiast vehicle. And, and, and I think that is what it is, but I don't think it's hard to sell 250,000 of these a year if they can make them. I think the challenge is going to be actually making them, not selling. Right. There's definitely been some reporting to that effect. Okay. So let's take a step back from the Cybertruck for just a second, Ross, because, and I don't know if people are not shooting at you in your car or throwing things at you, but I don't no, know if you continue to say negative stuff about Elon or criticize Elon. Maybe, maybe they're, come, they're coming for you. I don't know. Hopefully not. not maybe not just, where I live. just online. Not where I live. Just online, maybe. Um, people but, don't like Elon where I live. Remember, I live in California. Right. He's probably the most despised person in, I've seen in a long time. You know, it's, it's depressing to me because I like Elon. But the truth of the matter where I live, people love what I'm saying. You know. Well, I, I want to dig into this a little bit more, especially given what's happened this week, right? And obviously, the comments that he made at the Deal Book Summit that got the most attention were about his other, one of his other businesses, X. But, you know, it always comes back to this is the guy who's running these enormously powerful companies and at times seems to not really have it together. I'll say that diplomatically. So how much does that concern you as an investor? Well, there's two things that concern me in this part of this discussion. First is we spent a lot of time this week talking about what he said in deal book instead of Cybertruck. And it took a lot away from the Tesla event. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it's sad to be that everybody's talking about, you know, him cursing out advertisers versus the Cybertruck, which is really the story. It's an incredible piece of technology. So in a way it's like sad to me, you know, the second side of the story as a Tesla investor, this isn't good for Tesla 
There's no question it's affecting people's purchasing decisions. They're lowering prices. They're giving away charging. They're going to have to do more and more and more of this. We're in a highly polarized world today. And many of the things that us public figures say is, you know, highly parsed by our customers, including everything I say by my customers. And, and you know, we have to be very careful if we don't want to hurt our businesses and express ourselves freely. And Elon's not doing a good job of that and it's hurting Tesla. And and that's what I've expressed. I, I really think, you know, it's unfortunate that his investment with X is such a conflict of interest for Tesla shareholders, but there's no doubt in my mind that it's hurting Tesla. So what should be done about it? Should he, I mean, you know, he's he found another CEO for X. That doesn't seem to have helped. Does somebody else need to be running Tesla more day to day? I mean, you know, he's not going to, be quiet. That that doesn't seem right. to be the remedy here. So what's the remedy? Well, Tesla, you know, Elon's not a collaborator, so he's not going to have you know some sort of COO CEO partnership like, for example, I do with my partner or many companies have. You know, I don't think I don't know who would run Tesla under the conditions that Elon would want and with the team that he has. And the best chance they had was Zach Kirkhorn, who's, who's now gone. So. You know, this is my concern with Tesla is secession planning. I mean, it's Elon's company. It's basically like a private company. The board isn't going to do anything for the benefit of shareholders. So, you know, quite frankly, I think Tesla shareholders need to assess that, that we're on this boat and and we have no control of the boat. And the guy piloting the boat has a lot of other boats. And that's just a fact. It is just a fact. Now, as of the last filing that I saw, Ross, you guys still had almost, what, 400,000 shares, something like that. You guys are shareholders. Are you considering trimming it all because of all of this? Well, we've been trimming our Tesla position over the last six months, mostly relevant to our allocation more than the actual ownership. You know, we want to own Tesla for the long term. We, we believe in the company and I, I'm a long term shareholder in Tesla, but it was our largest. It is still our, actually our largest individual stock position. It represents a huge amount of assets for many of my clients and many of which are older too, you know, so, and and we've made a hundred times our money on Tesla. This is unheard of in the investment world, you know, like making a hundred times your money. So for us, like, it just makes sense to take profits over time for, for clients relative to their individual situation. But as a whole, as a firm, Tesla's a top five position at our firm and in my ETF GK I, I think it's one of the most innovative technology companies in the world, and it's working on some of the most important technologies for what we invest in in climate. And so Tesla's going to remain a top holding in our fund, you know, either way. And, you know, I'm a supporter of, you know, the mission of Tesla. Um, and one final question for you on another company, because um, Ford, uh, the CEO there, Jim Farley, tweeting today about the record month that Ford had for F-150 Lightning sales for October. Um, you guys, I believe, had some Ford shares at one point. Uh, I don't believe you have them anymore. But, you know, even though their de demand seems to be falling overall for EV vehicle EVs, is there an opportunity here for some of Tesla's competitors to step up? We're not Ford shareholders and, and we haven't been, you know, as a firm for many reasons, although I like Jim Farley and I like what he's doing. Um, I think the EV players are suffering from bad charging solutions that's now being alleviated by everybody moving to the Tesla charging standard. Most people who've bought other EVs like Fords or or the Volkswagens have problems with the charging when they're you know going to destinations. And, and that's been a big issue. So I think with Rivian and Ford and all the companies moving to the Tesla charging standard next year, this will be a huge plus for the other EV players. It's actually one of the biggest moats Tesla has is the supercharging network. And they're opening that up to the competitors. So this this is a, a huge boon for the competitors of Tesla, actually, um, although it's great for EV adoption. So I, 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 I like the Ford vehicles. I think they're priced right. And I think the next wave of EVs are trucks, whether it be Rivian and Tesla, which have expensive trucks, or Ford, which has a much more affordable truck. And, and, and I think it's great. You know, the Lightning's a great vehicle for the money. So, 
So I think as we move forward, I think people want EVs. People don't want to pay for gas. I think this nonsense that EV sales are slowing or whatever is more company related and product related, but consumers want EVs and, and we expect this demand to can continue to increase over time. All right, well, well we're gonna keep in touch, check back in with you when you get your Cybertruck and switch up yeah. your vehicles. Good to catch up with you, Ross. Really appreciate your perspective. Yeah, thanks for having me.